It's a blue Christmas, y'all. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. The first project is going to be a wreath. I'm going to take some really thick yarn, some pipe cleaners, a 14 inch wreath from Dollar Tree, a variety of ribbons, some picks that have blueberries on them. We're going to start off by wrapping this frame with some yarn. If you don't want to use yarn, you can always use maybe some of that white automotive cloth from Dollar Tree. You could use something like that if you want, or you can use any type of a, um, you can use a felt roll, you can use whatever you like here. I just wanted to try this because it's really easy. It's not anything new, but rather than weave it, I just wanted to wrap it all the way around this wreath because it's fluffy and it's snowy looking to me, close enough anyway. And I'm just going to wrap it all around the wreath. Once you get the hang of how you want to hold it and move that ball of yarn around, it'll go a lot quicker. Got to get your technique down. Now there will be some gaps here and there that are very easy to fix. They usually get kind of hung up on the crossbars, but you can just use your finger and just pick it up and move the bottom and then move the top over. I'm trying to make sure that they're evenly spaced. And I cut another section because I ran out. I'm just going to tie it into the yarn that's already down and tuck it in. And then I wrapped it around this spool and look how much easier and neater that is. If it's wrapped around a spool like this, it doesn't have the opportunity to get all tangled up. Now, if I would have done this from the beginning, I would have had this thing whipped up in no time, y'all. Hindsight, right? So I'm gonna go all the way around until we're back to the original spot. If you run out of string again, just go ahead and put another piece in there. You just tie it in. So now once we get close to the end, I'm just going to make sure that I am sliding it over so that you don't see a bunch of lumps and bumps. I'll cut off a little tail so that I have something to tie to the area that I was just wrapping around. And I'm just tying it to itself. You don't have to make a huge knot here because we're going to secure it with a little bit of hot glue. And then I'll just cut off the excess. You can tuck the little end inside. And I like the way it looks. I think it's pretty. So here are some of our, I don't know if this, is this called blue spruce? Is this spruce? I know it's some type of an evergreen, but they're in picks that are kind of, you know, wrapped together. So I'm just taking those apart, fluffing those out because a lot of times when things are in storage, they get all mashed. So we need to fluff them back up. And then I'm gonna cut the tails off. I don't need those little stems to be too long. So cutting them off make it easier for me to work with and you won't be able to see it because anything you put on top of that white is really going to stand out. So I want to cut as much of that off as I can. Nobody wants to see that plastic, right? And then I'm just getting an idea of how I want to lay this down on my wreath. Some of the picks have berries and some do not. So I have decided to alternate with um, one that does and one that doesn't. One that does and one that doesn't. All the way around so I can stretch that color out. Now the pipe cleaners, you can cut them in half if you would like, or you can leave them whole and then just cut off the excess. I'll do it both ways for you so you can see the difference. You don't have a lot of room if you cut them in half to wrap, so you've really got to, you got to be able to use your fingertips well to do this. You don't have a lot of room. And then you can tuck the end down into the yarn. I'm going to overlap, and then I'll take another piece. And I'm kind of going like through the greenery. I don't want this to be mashed down. I want it to almost disappear. So I'm trying to make sure I put it in places where it's not that noticeable. Now I'm overlapping with one with berries. And I'm using a whole um, pipe cleaner for this to show you how it would look if you use the whole one. Just wrapped it around. Now I'm going to go on to the next one. And you can use as many picks as you want. Remember that when you get picks at Dollar Tree or Walmart or wherever you get them, you can cut them into pieces. You don't have to use the entire pick in one spot. In fact, I can't tell you the last time I used the pick as it comes on the stem. I, I just about always take my pieces apart for florals, for wreaths, for anything. But that's clearly my choice. You can do it the way that you like it. I'm trimming down another piece there. 
And then you can take your wire cutters and just trim off the back. If you've got some really tough scissors that you use for crafting, you can use those, but don't use your good scissors. All right, so for that, I'm gonna go ahead and leave it like this. Then I have some more berry picks that I found that have a little bit different greenery. It's a little bit lighter, not as bluish toned. So I'm mixing those in and that really thicken it up. There's miniature pine cones that came from Dollar Tree in a bag. And these are kind of snowy looking. I think they look nice. The berries that are on these picks are kind of um, frosted or snowy looking too. So I think they look good together. Then I'm going to take some ribbon. This is a one and a half foot or 18 inch ruler. So I'm going to cut these strips into 18 inches. I have, mm, I think, three or four, four different types of ribbon. So I'm just gonna fold those in half, bunch them in the middle, and then hold them between my thumb and my forefinger. This is what is called a funky bow. Maybe called other things, but when I learned it, that's what it was called. So I'm going to go halfway down the folded ribbon like this and grab it in the center and just kind of press it in to my hand and I'm not taking those out or moving those at all in my right hand. They're gonna stay clamped like they're in a vise in my hand over there. Just looking at it to make sure that they're all the same length, just like that, like a little dome. Then I'll go in with another one. It's important to mix up how you're putting these in your hand so that you don't have too many of the same patterns and size together. You want it to have a little bit of variety and difference so I'm just alternating the ones that I put in my hand. I have three of each ribbon that I'm using. Obviously, the bigger the ribbon and the more ribbon, the bigger the bow. I don't want something that's going to totally overwhelm this wreath. In fact, before this bow, I had tried to do a different one and it was just way too big. It did not suit the look at all. So once you have them all in your hand, you can use a zip tie or chenille stem, whatever you have. But when you use your zip tie, you can wrap it around. I am right-handed and I'm gonna hold it tight. I still have not let go at all of my right hand, still holding that. I'm just gonna cinch that down tight, grab my cutters, cut the tail off. And then I'm gonna fluff it from underneath first. So we're gonna flip the entire bow over and we're gonna flip the tails downward. So they're gonna go toward all the loops of the bow. When you flip them, like this you're going to be making sure that the pattern part is facing away from you because when you turn this over they will be on the top and that's the idea you want all the pretty stuff facing the top so just continue to turn and twist it's important to use wired ribbon for this so that everything will stay where you put it and continue all the way around until you get all of those tail pieces facing the other way and fluffed apart. So now you can see sort of toward the center of the bow and you can turn it over. And when you turn it over, you can go ahead and kind of look at your spacing between the tails and begin to fluff up the loops on the top of the bow. And you can get an idea of what patterns are closer together, what needs to be moved and just slide them around in there. Slide them around, move them over until you get the look and the shape that you like. I think this is really pretty right now. It's just kind of reminding me of the shape of like a chrysanthemum or something, you know, like a Christmas flower. But I am working on a blue Christmas because a blue Christmas is the song that I chose. We grew up listening to Elvis Presley at Christmas time, making Christmas candies, decorating. And so when I think about Christmas, I think about Elvis. I know it's kind of crazy. I'm not like the hugest Elvis fan, but you know, certain times a year when I, I have to have the music. So I have been listening to Elvis while I am crafting. And Blue Christmas it is. So after you've got as much greenery as you want, you can go ahead and put the bow down. I'm using glue here because I don't want this to go anywhere at all. Press on the inside of your bow, not the outside, because you don't want to mash down all the work you did. I'm going to be taking some wooden snowflakes, using those in the ornament. But I want to expand on that bow just a little bit. So I'm gonna make tails, and this is how I make my little short tails. I have about seven inches of ribbon, fold it over, cut your dovetails, pinch it in the middle, 
and then twist outward with the one that's facing away from you. Then I just use a pipe cleaner, twisted it around really tightly to make a little point so we have something to glue with and then flick those ends out. And this is how that will look. And it just looks like tails on a bow, but you just don't have your bow. So they're just little freestanding tails. Adding those in underneath the layers of the tails on the bow is going to make that a little bit wider. It's gonna make it a little bit bigger. So we're gonna do the same thing with the large silver ribbon and extend it upward. Now we can put on the snowflakes, but to add some dimension, I'm using some of these little blocks that came from Dollar Tree. I'm gonna put it on the back, glue it down, and then I can position it where I think it would look good on the wreath. And I'm just gonna put one on the top of the bow and one in the back of the bow, or in the front and behind. I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and pressing that down so it goes through the greenery and into the wreath form that is underneath. I don't want these to move at all, and thankfully they are not moving. They are staying in place. So I left a long pipe cleaner on the top that we used to secure the greenery. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a loop with it. I'm gonna leave a gap in the middle, twist the ends, open that loop, and then twist those ends around the inside and outside of the loop. And that makes a nice little soft hanger. It won't scratch your wall if you do it correctly. And then when that is all done, you go through and do your final look fluff things out. If you need to add a little bit of glue, go ahead and do that. Make it look nice and pretty. Y'all want to stay to the end of this video because there's some really cool stuff going on and I do not want you to miss it. And if you run out of here too quick, you're going to miss it and you're going to be beating yourself up about it later. Okay. The next is going to be a bulb sign. I'm gonna use elephant gray and sterling silver paints, a glue stick, a little squeegee, a variety of ribbons, this is just one. And then these are actually little name tags for gifts that somebody handmade. I got them at the thrift store and I love them. And then this is a tag sign from Dollar Tree or a ornament sign from Dollar Tree and a beautiful piece of blue snowflake paper. Looks like a blue Christmas. I'll turn the paper upside down because it's much easier to see when you trace on white than on patterns, so I'm just flipping it over. I'm gonna go all the way around. This bulb is the same size all over. It's symmetrical, so you don't have to be particular about how you lay it down. And then I'm just going to cut out around where I traced. I'm gonna go on the outside of the line so I don't cut anything too short and this is how it will look on the bulb. I've decided to use the back rather than the front, but you can peel that paper off on the front section and get rid of that because you are not going to need any mess in the back. Or you could put craft paper over the back or another piece of scrapbook paper to, look at, to make it look nice and finished. Once the glue is down, I'm gonna go ahead and settle down that piece of beautiful paper right on top of it press it down and spread it out with my hands and then I'll take that little squeegee and make sure that every little piece is in contact with the board underneath just slid it over just a little bit and making sure that it's around the edges and then to clean up the edges I'm going to grab a sanding block or a fingernail file you can see I'm using both here and just go around all the edges you see I peeled the back off so it's nice and clean I'll take that elephant gray paint and go over the top part of the ornament where it is usually some type of metal. I'm gonna just go over that here with the gray. I'm going to use silver on top of it, but I'll use two coats of the gray first. I'll let it dry completely in between. When you put the gray on top of this brown, it's going to kind of soak into it in this MDF or whatever this material is. So just be sure that you you know, you let that dry thoroughly first, and then you can go over it with some silver. And then I'm going to fill in the little hole here with just one of those little table scatter pieces from Dollar Tree, and start choosing what kind of ribbons you wanna use. These are the ones that I found that kind of coordinate with the paper. So I'm going to lay them down and measure about seven inches 
for each one and I'm going to do two of each pattern. So two of the, the thin silver, two of the brown with the silver snowflakes, two of the brown with the white snowflakes, so on and so on. Just as long as they're coordinating with our paper on the bulb sign. I'm gonna go ahead and cut some dovetails in the ribbon and then we're gonna make an X pattern with this one. This is gonna be the little messy bow. I love this little bow. Just go ahead and stack your patterns whichever way you like them. I like to put this, the biggest in the back and then kind of move toward the smaller pieces in the front because otherwise they get kind of lost in there. I had just a little bit left of this one so I went ahead and put it in there and I think it looks good. You have a variety of textures and colors and patterns and that's what gives interest to a piece. I'm just going to pick it up, pick that stack up, kind of bunch them toward each other, walk them toward each other into the center. And then with just a little piece of jute, since I already have brown in there, I'm gonna tie this off. And I'll put a couple of knots in it so it stays in place. Tie it really tight. You could use baker's twine, string, whatever you have. And you can even use a pipe cleaner here if that's what you had. It's getting close to the end of the season, so we wanna use up what we have, right? We don't wanna have to go out and get anything extra. Plus the crowds are ridiculous this time of year. So just pull them and kind of make sure that you got the same lengths on both sides and you're able to do that. If you get your knot right, you can still pull these from side to side just a little bit. Then you want to kind of flick the tails down and spread those out and it gives you such a pretty little bow. This would be pretty on a gift too, I think. And then I'm just going to put it right in the center under the top pull up it a little. I don't want it to be flat. Then I tried to peel the backing off and it didn't work. So we're just going to, we're just going to go with it. I'm going to add some hot glue, put it down there and make sure I have it in the center of the bow. And I think that is going to give it a very pretty look. Then, you know, I'm always forever fluffing my bows and my bow type items. And I think it's such a pretty little thing and it would be nice on a big tree ornament too, I think. What do you think? Today we are teaming up with some of our crafty friends for a Christmas collaboration. We are all so thankful for each and every one of you and wanted to be able to do a giveaway just in time for Christmas. We are excited to announce that we will have three winners. Don't skip forward, watch the rest of this clip to see what you have to do to have a chance to win and how you can qualify. If you are looking for a beautiful piece to dress up your home or to give as a gift, check out Tailored Canvases. They have gorgeous canvases for every room of your home and you can even get a personalized canvas. Tailored Canvases will be gifting one lucky friend with a canvas of their choice up to a size of 24 by 48 inches. These are high quality home decor pieces that you are sure to love. Hop over to their website listed below and check out all they have to offer. Next we have Totally Dazzled. No matter what the occasion, if you want to add a little sparkle or a lot of bling, you can find the perfect pieces at Totally Dazzled. They have gorgeous pieces that can be used to dress up your craft projects, give the perfect sparkle to your table, or even add to your wedding. Totally Dazzled has generously provided a $50 gift certificate for one lucky friend to use on whatever they would like from their website. Make sure you follow the link in the description box below to go check out all of their beautiful pieces. Last but certainly not least, we have a Sherbonder Grace Monroe Glue Skillet Kit. You will see Trish using hers in the Crafting Cousins video and we'll see just how handy it is, especially when working with florals. It saves your fingers from burns and is an invaluable tool that any crafter would love to get, especially at Christmas. Follow the link in the description box to get even more information on this amazing gift. Now, how do you qualify? Watch all five videos in the collaboration. Each creator will ask you a specific question somewhere in their video. Leave your answer to the question in the comments and you are entered to win. You must answer the question for each of the five videos to be eligible. We will be drawing for our winners on Saturday, December 17th and will announce the winners on the community tabs for our channels. Please be advised that Tailored Canvases, Totally Dazzled and Surebonder are providing these amazing gifts at no charge in connection with these videos. Also, please note that this giveaway is in no way associated with YouTube and YouTube is not responsible for anything regarding the giveaway. As always, we would like to thank you for your support. We appreciate you all. Good luck in the drawings and Merry Christmas. Next, we're going to do a shelf sitter sign. We're gonna use one of these little signs from Dollar Tree. 
some cloth from Dollar Tree, an ornament that came from Dollar Tree, a couple of brushes, you might need white paint, some type of a blue since we're all about blue Christmas right now. And then this I got from the thrift store. It made its way to the bins. I'm just gonna reuse the paper that came in here. I'm gonna put the star aside and we can use that paper to protect the table. We're gonna cut the string and the tag off of the ornament. And then on our letters, we're going to begin to paint. This is a beautiful, I think it's called a dark navy blue. It looks really bright when you first paint it, but it does darken up as it dries. It took me two coats. I went all the way around and let it dry. So you're gonna take this other side, take the hanger out, get your cloth, and I'm just cutting off the excess because this is one I've been using, so saving money there, using a remnant. I glued one side. I'm going to lay it down, add some glue along that edge enough to really get some grip on it. And this is Gorilla Glue, by the way, in this glue gun. Careful and protect your fingers if you need to. Then I'm going to get the wrinkles out, press it down. It's going to sit up and dry nicely and I will trim off the excess from that side. I'm going to lift the ends up and cut across. They're going to be about a half, no, maybe like a quarter of an inch longer than the end of the box is. And we're gonna fold this almost like you would when you are wrapping a Christmas present or a gift. Just going to glue that down. I'm gonna add some more glue. Fold the other side over. I'm just pulling it tightly so the corners are nice and flat. Then I'm going to add some right down the middle. Carefully flip this up without touching the glue. That's why you need to protect your fingers. And then I'm just gonna use a clamp to hold it in place while I go to the other end. So here's the other side, adding the glue. Gonna go right down the center, press it upward and over and clamp it. Once it's dry, take your clamps off, flip it over and trim off your excess on the sides. And there's our base. I'm gonna use E6000 and some hot glue to put on the bottom of these. I didn't paint the bottoms because there's really no sense in it. Then I'm gonna add hot glue in the middle Place it down on the sign, and I'm pressing pretty hard, hoping it will go through that fabric onto the block, but it didn't. So I'm using some short staples, and I'm going to staple the J in from the underside, and then I'm gonna do the same process. I'm gonna add some of that E6000, some hot glue, press it down, give it a minute to kind of cling to that. Then I'm gonna flip it over, support it, and use my staple gun on the bottom. It'll go right into the center, and it holds it nicely. Perfect. Now the snowflake weighs essentially nothing. It's like styrofoam, it, it just it hardly has any weight. So we're gonna do it a little bit different to attach it. I'm gonna add hot glue. I'm gonna put it in the middle because the snowflake is going to be our O. I'm gonna press it down and then going all around the outside of that while I'm holding it in place, I'm gonna trace it out with some glue to really give it some more support. Now the fun part, get out the Mod Podge. We're gonna go across the tops of the letters and the snowflake and then in the cracks and any place like snow would naturally fall. You see how wobbly that snowflake is? Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. Yeah, you wanna put it there because we're gonna put snow on top of the Mod Podge and that is gonna give it a nice snowy look. So he talks about, uh, I think part of the lyrics is, you'll be doing all right with your Christmas of white but I'll have a blue, blue Christmas. So this is the Christmas of white. We're putting some snow on here, making it really pretty. We've got a snow theme going on with our ornaments. Well, with our decorations, not our ornaments. We didn't do ornaments, did we? Although you could probably poke this in the tree if you wanted. Just gonna continue to flick that snow all over it, flip it over, tap it off, and get it all out of there. And you see everything's hanging on there nicely. I'm beating the you know what out of it and it's still holding on so that's good but in the end I needed a couple of staples to help me hold that down so I added some staples in the bottom a little more hot glue and finally she's standing up on her own there we go this is how that sign is going to look
So part of the rules for this video is that we were going to make a video based on a song that we love, a Christmas song, and we have to have you guys answer a question. So here's my question for you. If you could live in any holiday movie, which one would it be? Any holiday movie, which one would it be? And you have to comment that in my video as well as going over to the other creators, watching them and answering their question for a chance to win one of three wonderful prizes. I hope that you're going to check out everybody in the rest of the playlist because we had a blast working together and we came up with some really cool ideas for you guys and Trish and Kay from Crafting Cousins got us some really good prizes and you guys are going to just absolutely love them. I appreciate you being here. If you're a subscriber of mine, thank you so much again. If you're new and you came from someone else's channel, I want to say a big welcome and give you a virtual hug. I'm so happy to have you here. All the links that you need to participate will be in the description box. Be sure that you follow all the rules. You don't want to be disqualified on a technicality. Thank y'all so much for stopping by. I hope you go out and find some joy in your day. And Merry Christmas. Bye.